How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we are going to be rebuilding the New York Mets, the team you guys voted for after the Rays rebuild. If you guys missed that one, it's right here. Go and click that link. Go and watch the Rays rebuild. It was probably one of my most favorite teams to rebuild. Like, it just was a lot of fun to do. It was a really enjoyable rebuild. So, I know I promised this to you guys about four days ago. The issue is I've had a concussion, so staring at a screen for three hours actually is like the worst thing to do for me. So I've taken a couple days to fully recover so that I don't like midway through recording get a really bad headache and just hate the video. Like if I start getting a headache, I'm going to get like really mad. I'm going to rush through it. I'm not going to be like super excited during the video. I'm not going to be energetic and it's just not going to be good content for you guys. So that's why I've taken a couple days to kind of just fully recover so i hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content and again in the comment section below let me know some teams you guys want me to re uh, rebuild in the future so let's just hop into this enough chit chat with the intro i'm just gonna let you guys know this team needs a lot of changes so this might be the one rebuild where it is just crazy crazy trades and roster moves there's there's a lot of it so talking about this team you guys can see that the ground and Syndergaard are gonna be those two main pitchers that we're gonna keep around for the future the Grom's having an amazing year in real life um, he's he's just not getting the run support because the wins and losses aren't there but his ERA is like two which is crazy to think about where he's not really having a winning record when his ERA is two Syndergaard's another an amazing pitcher to keep around Steven Matt could be one for the future Steven Matt's I should say and then uh, Vargas and Wheeler. Vargas is just aging, so I'm looking to move on from him. And Wheeler, I just it might just be time to move on. He's 27, and he's not seven, and he's not even a, a 70 overall. So it might just be time to find a fourth and fifth starter for the future. And then looking down here, there's a couple B potential players, but there's not any that really get me excited to like look forward for the future in this rebuild. For the relief pitching, it's again, we have a couple decent players, but nothing too special. Jerry Blevins is probably a player I'm going to move on from just because of age. Um, AJ Ramos is a player that if he pitches okay, I'm okay with keeping him. Um, same with Schwarzik and then uh, Sewald and Lugo. I hope they develop and turn into pretty decent pitchers. Down here, again, kind of the same situation. Not too many players I'm getting too excited about. We got Robert Jesselman, Jesselman, Selman. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm going to call him Robert, but um, 77 overall B potential. I see him more as like a long relief pitcher because of his stamina, but, um, and maybe find a new closer. But if he does a good job in the closer role, we might actually keep him there. Um, catchers, we have Travis Darno, Mezzarocco, and Ploiecki. Um, we also have Tomas Nito in the um, AAA farm system. So we have a couple decent catchers, but no one that's really good so i'm really i'm okay with darno staying around if he performs well or mezzarocco but if they don't we're definitely going to need a new catcher first baseman i'm going to see how well dominic smith develops for this type of rebuild because usually a potential players who are young and have a high overall develop quite quickly um i know in real life he's pretty bad but um maybe in this sim style rebuild he'll be you know decent Wilmer Flores I'm okay keeping him around as long as he does well um he's he's not a bad player 75 overall 26 he does have C potential so it's kind of he's either gonna do good or he's gonna do poorly so let's hope it's let's hope it's good um Todd Frazier <laughs> if you guys don't follow draft neck mark go and do it um he absolutely hates Todd Frazier and uh, I, he's just not a good baseball player anymore. So I think it's time for him to get out the door. Jose Reyes, it's one of those players where I might keep him for this season, but after the season, I already know he's going to ask for too much money for a 34 year old low 70s um, player. So it's, it's probably a one and done season for him. David Wright, he'll probably just rot away in the, in the minors for the rest of this rebuild. Ahmed Rosario. He should develop quite nicely young, almost a 70 overall and a potential. And then we also have a couple B potential shortstops in Luis Guillorme, Andres Jimenez, and Mark Vientos. Moving into the outfield, Yoannis Cespedes is going to be moving up into the majors. He's only in the minors because in real life he's hurt. Um, Michael Conforto, Austin Jackson is going to be traded for sure. Brandon Nimmo is going to be staying. Juan Lagares is going to be that like um, outfield rotational player. 
Uh, we also do have Desmond Lindsay and Jared Kel Kelenic or Kelenic. Um, the thing is, I don't think these two will ever be good enough in this three to four, two or three season rebuild. So I just don't know if I'll keep them around. It might just be best to trade them for someone good. And then we have Jay Bruce and Bautista who are just garbage. So it's time to get on. It's just time to move on from them. It's they're aging and they're, they're not going to help us um, in the future. So we have a lot of aging players and uh, we need to make this team a lot younger. Oh, I forgot to mention Tim Tebow. Just, just get out. Just, just get out of here. I don't, I don't want you with the Mets right now. So we have a lot of aging players and that's, that's kind of a problem because they're not really going to develop too much more and we kind of need to youth in or yeah youth in the squad make them young. we got we got to make the squad younger so we got to find some ways to trade these older players for young talent with that being said i'll probably keep on to Johannes cespedes because he's one of the better outfielders as long as he performs well if he starts to decrease and doesn't do well He's out the he's out the door. So trade number one is going to be Jerry Blevins and Jason Vargas, two players I was looking to move anyways for Hunter Strickland, who could either be a setup man or a closer for us. 29 years old, 82 overall, B potential, really nice stat. So I'm really looking forward to using um, him as our setup or our closer. I definitely think he'll be um, he'll be he'll be a help for us. And plus we're getting rid of two players that I didn't really want to keep around. Next trade we're going to be making is for start starting pitcher John Gray, kind of strengthening that rotation. 26 years old, B potential at um, 82 overall, definitely will help us out. We are getting rid of um, one of our lower rated players in Matthew Perk, and then getting rid of a center field, like this is the main piece, Jared Kelenich. But like I said, we have Nimmo who can play center and he's got a potential mid 20s 77 overall i don't really see um jared kalinich taking over his spot anytime soon so i'm okay with letting him go if it helps us out in the rotation especially since um starting pitching is kind of important in a sim style like every piece is important in a sim style franchise franchise rebuild but um Having good starting pitching definitely helps. So I think this is a really good trade for us. The next trade we're gonna be making is Chris Flexen, 23 years old, B potential, 60 overall, and then our two aging right fielders in Jay Bruce, as well as Jose Bautista. Um, like I said, these two guys I wanted out the door anyways. Chris Flexen could be a decent pitcher for the future, but we're gonna be getting Randy Arizarena, as well as relief pitcher Jordan Hicks, from the Cardinals, which I think will definitely be good for the future, as well as second baseman and Edmundo Sosa. So Edmundo Sosa looks pretty decent. 22 B potential, 70 overall. Um, we might need a second baseman in the future, anyways, since Wilmer Flores might not be good. Or and then besides him, no one else really is good there. So we get a second baseman who could be good for us for the future. A relief pitcher who's gonna definitely help us out in season two and season three, not necessarily season one. And then we're um, adding a left field prospect who could definitely be used as a, a trade piece or if he develops nicely, a uh, helpful um, outfield uh, rotational player, platoon player. So we're getting rid of two aging right fielders and a starting pitcher who probably won't crack the rotation during this rebuild. So I think this is definitely a good trade for us. Alrighty, the next trade is again um, with an aging outfielder in Austin Jackson, 31 years old, C potential, 80 overall. We're going to be trading for Sam Tuivalala, who in real life just got traded from the Cardinals to the Mariners. But as you can see, his stats are pretty good already. And in this recent like roster update of the OSFM rosters, he turns into an absolute monster. I think in within one season, he hits the high 70s. And um, in the Rays rebuild, I was monitoring this guy like crazy because I wanted to trade for him. But at, in the first season, I think he pitched like 60 innings and had like a 0.7 ERA. So I I definitely want to see how he performs. Um, and definitely, I definitely think he's going to help out our bullpen. So for this trade, so I noticed we need a lefty in the bullpen. We don't really have that many. So Taylor Rogers of the twins, decent stats, 74 overall B potential, 27 years old. So he should develop is going to be joining us in New York. 
for Jordan Humphreys, C potential. Next up, Kevin Plowecki, C potential. And then um, Cody Ash, again, C potential. And they're all in the mid 60s that we're getting rid of for this mid 70s relief pitcher. So for players that probably won't develop too much more and won't help us out in the long term, I definitely think adding Taylor Rogers is the right move in this instance. Next trade we're gonna be making is, it involves a couple decent pieces. Just recently acquired Randy Arizarena is moving as well as a player I wanted to move anyways in Todd Frazier and then a catcher in Patrick Mazenski, Mazeka, Patrick Mazeka. So they're moving and they're going to the Orioles for Yusniel Diaz, Yusniel. We're just, yeah, Yusniel Diaz, B potential, 67 overall, 21 years old. He just came over from the Dodgers in the Machado trade, but I think, you know, maybe adding another prospect outfielder, I think this is the right move. I want to see how he develops as well because he's a recently added player for the OSFM rosters. So I think it's kind of cool to just try out new players and see how they progress in the future. So, plus he's a really good prospect. I think he's going to help us out in the outfield. All right, to start season one, this is how we're going to be looking in the rotation in the bullpen. DeGrom, Syndergaard, John Gray, Steven Matz, and Zach Wheeler. And then in the bullpen, um, we got um, Robert, Taylor Rogers, Anthony Swarzak, Paul Sewald, Seth Lugo, Tuivalala, Ramos, and Strickland. We're going to put Strickland in the closing role. For the lineup, this is how we're looking. Um, no DH, we got Ahmed Rosario, Brandon Nimmo. Michael Conforto, um, Jose Reyes, Yoannis Cespedes, Dominic Smith, Wilmer Flores, Devin Mezzarocco, and then on the bench we got McNeil, Darno, and Lagara. So pretty decent lineup. I'm expecting probably around the 500 mark for the first year. I mean, our pitching doesn't look bad. I just definitely think we could do a little bit better in the lineup. Um, we need Nimmo to develop, Conforto to develop. I'm probably going to need a new third baseman next season, Dominic Smith to develop. And then um, Ahmed Rosario to develop as well. I think those are the big pieces for us. Once we get that those youth players to develop, we'll be really good. So let's hop into the draft day, and I'll catch you guys then. Already draft day. I think, yeah, we have the sixth pick. So let's see where we go with this one. We're going to go Fred Reigns here. Fully scouted. Got some pretty good stats already. And I, I like I like what I see. We're going to go with um, Ilberto Sombrano out of Venezuela. Besides his Ks per nine and his walks per nine, everything else looks pretty solid. So we're going to go with this one. Even though I don't have him scouted, we're going to go with Julio Chassin. He's got some good hitting stats and decent fielding for a first baseman. And he's a switch hitter, so he could be pretty good for the future. We're going to go with Javier Castilla here. Got some good contact stats, um, plate, division, plate vision and discipline, and uh, stealing. So... Could be a decent little pickup here in the fourth round. We're going to go with Fernando Nivar out of Maryland here. His stats look pretty decent. I know I don't have him scouted, but um, everybody else is pretty much taken after five rounds. So last round here, let's see who we go with. All right, we'll go with Mario Garlobo. He's the last 80 potential player. He, he doesn't look that good for the future, um, but who knows? Looking at our draft picks, um, eh, you know making sure i'm in the right corner because i'm going to show you guys the stats fred reigns looks pretty good 74 overall already a potential and he's a uh, got our 74 overall got a potential 91 potential he looks really really good so i'm glad we drafted him the next one ilberto zambrano 57 overall but he's got 90 potential so again a really good pickup for us in the draft and then the rest Pretty, pretty lackluster. Um, Julio Chassin, you can see his stats. Eh. Um, he can play. No, no. no eh. Javier Castilla, nothing too impressive there. Uh, Fernando Nivar, again, nothing too impressive there. And then um, Mario Garlobo, again, nothing too impressive. So pretty underwhelming draft besides our first two picks. So let's get to the trade deadline day and see how the rest of the season can turn out for us. Um, with the Mets at the deadline we're sitting at five games under 500 about about where I'm expecting us to be ten and a half games out of first place in the east and we're sitting about six games out in the wild card so we're not too far off but if we don't make the wild card I'm not I'm not too worried about it DeGrom is 11 and 6 having a really solid year 2.64 ERA Syndergaard is having a really good year in terms of ERA but the wins and losses aren't there but 
with our starters i'm not expecting the wins and losses to be there i'm more worried about era numbers especially since we're not winning that many games so Syndergaard, he's developing as well like his stats are going up his walks and strikeout numbers are really good and then um he's only i mean yeah he's he's having a really solid year john gray even though he's having a cold seat like he's on a cold streak he's having a decent year just under a four era steven matz is he's he's okay um four era seven and six let's see his walks and strikeouts walks and strikeouts aren't that bad and zach wheeler i think it's gonna be time to move on from zach wheeler um after this season he's got a seven era um anthony swarzik has um held down the long relief role pretty well you can see he's going up in rating even though he's 32 he's got uh 60 innings and a 2.58 era so that's really nice 3.66 era for taylor rogers he's been injured for the last two months he had a, like a fracture or a broken hand or something that's why he's only pitched 20 innings but um you can see his stats are going up so that's good to see paul sawald is eh, i think he's gonna be a player that i'm gonna be trading especially since he has c potential now seth lugo he's increasing in stats so hopefully he can turn it around in the second half of this season because his season's not going that great this is the player I guys told you about. So we have Alala. He's a 79 overall already. And um, at 40 in oh, 36 innings pitched, he's got a 1.24 ERA and a 0.94 whip. Like he is doing really, really good. I highly recommend you guys pick him up. Um, Why wow, this is all jumbled up here. But you can see AJ Ramos. He's starting to decrease, which is unfortunate. Um, let's see if he's got anything his region his performance isn't helping in morale so that's probably why he's not doing too well but he's having an okay year robert is having an hit or miss year you can kind of see it's not helping him and then hunter strickling is going down in rating um mostly because of his era i'm assuming and just you know we're just not having the best of seasons so he's only he's blown four saves which is a little bit disappointing to see but um overall pitching not too bad um into the actual lineup Ligaris is hitting 242 with a what about a 300 on base percentage wish it was a little bit higher but i mean you can see he's even going up in rating um brandon nimmo is a 77 still but his stats are going up he's having a pretty decent year like a 388 on base percentage i like that a lot michael conforto yikes i'm gonna have to keep my eye on this definitely he's down to a 79 Johannes Cespedes is starting to decrease, but he's starting to go up in some areas. He's hitting 261 on the year. Um, not horrible. Juan, Juan, Jose Ramirez is having an okay year. Um, but again, not a player I'm looking to keep. Dominic Smith has gone up two ratings. This is who I'm looking at to like develop. He's hitting almost 300, which is good to see. Wilmer Flores is going up as well. So he was one of those players that as long as he played well, I'd keep him. But 214. And not necessarily too good. Ahmed Rosario's gone up two ratings as well, you can see. Um, but his average just isn't that great. But his hitting stats aren't that good. Um, as long as he's developing, I'm happy to see it. And then Devin Mezzarocco is he's he's doing okay. On the bench, you got these two guys. Travis Darno's doing a little bit better than Devin Mezzarocco, so it might be time to just have Darno start over Mezzarocco full time, just because. He's higher rated and he's actually performing a lot better. So that's probably a, tr a move that I should be making. Already a trade we're making at the deadline is adding a third baseman for the future. Nick Senzel um, from the Reds, 22 years old, a potential 73 overall. Looks really good already. And like I said, with Jose Reyes probably out the door at the end of the year, we're gonna be needing a new third baseman. With that being said, we're giving up a lot. We're getting rid of Peter Alonso, but as long as Dominic Smith um increases and develops we should be fine at first base as well as two pitchers one of which i'm okay with letting go zach wheeler the other one in david peterson so um we're giving up a lot but we're also getting rid of we're getting a really good third baseman for the future so this is a trade i think is going to help us out in the future now we just need to find a fifth starter so we're going to go to free agency for a two-year deal for michael you know he's 70 overall um and it's a contract that i'm okay with just getting just because we need someone to fill that last spot in the rotation so with that being said this is how we're looking like the trades that we made didn't don't really 
affect us right now they're more for the future especially since Senzel is going to the minors um, for a season for the rest of the year at least so we're gonna go to the end of the the, um, the end of the year and I'll catch you guys once we get there as you can see we finished at a 78 and 84 record let's see you know where we were in the standings about 16 games out in the east the nationals and phillies finished above us and in the wild card we finished nine and a half games out with that um you can see the playoff picture here a couple couple crazy teams but let's look at the pitching rotation degrom 90 overall he's starting to go down um but 16 and 11 so his season kind of got worse as the year went on but again like i said wins and losses not really worried about it it's all about the era and um, his ERA was phenomenal. Syndergaard is still going up in rating, and you can see his ERA was phenomenal. Strikeouts and walk numbers were really good. Same for DeGrom. John Gray is up to an 84. His strikeout and walk numbers were really good, and his ERA was a lot better in the second half of the season than the first. Steven Matz, um, pretty decent numbers besides ERA. And Yanoa, even though, um, yeah, he, he, even though he's up to a 76, not really really good over the year so you can see taylor rogers he's still going up in rating um innings pitched walks strikeout numbers aren't as good as i would hope but era not too bad schwarzik pretty good year under three era almost 100 k's in 91 innings that's actually pretty solid um so Wald had a rough year so it's probably time to move on from him seth lugo um had almost a five era but his his uh his stats were pretty decent and this guy is just amazing. Sam Tui Valala, 62 innings pitched, 1.4 ERA. Like, those are amazing numbers. Um, Robert, he's going up in rating, which is good to see. Um, but his ERA is still around a 5. AJ Ramos, okay. okay. And then Hunter Strickland is um, at, had a little bit better of a second half and didn't blow any saves in the second half. In the lineup, Juan Lagares is up to a 77. He hit 256 with a 306 on base percentage. Nimmo is up to a 78 now. Um, pretty pretty solid numbers there. Conforto is continue, continuing to go down, so it, that's not good to see. Cespedes is a 91. Like He, he had a pretty solid year, um, not too bad. Jose Reyes, an okay year. Um, um, pretty similar to the previous years actually Dominic Smith's up to a 74 you can see his stats are going up really really nicely 27 homers 257 and 345 Wilmer Flores his potential's gone down but his overall has gone up he had an okay year um, Jeff McNeil is actually up to a 71 which is kind of cool to see that we actually have a bench bat that's now gonna be a 71 because I want Ahmed Rosario to take over but Ahmed Rosario He's a 68, didn't have that good, that good of a year. So we, we're gonna have to look out for that. Overall, not a horrible year. Finished about where I expected. Looking at the relief pitchers, the only one I'm looking for is Jordan Hicks, who's down to a 67. Um, he was a 71 at the beginning of the year. Um, Thomas Tomas Nido is up to a 63. Um, and Mundo Sosa is a 73, which is good to see. Um, Senzel is up to a 76. So probably by next year, he'll be ready for the bigs. Guillaume is a 66. Jimenez and Vientos are down here as well. And then Victor Victor Mesa is a 68. And Yusniel Diaz is a 70. So he could be ready for the bigs next year. So overall, I feel pretty good. I feel like um, looking at the lineup, it might be time to move on from Conforto, find a new outfielder. And then the big thing for me is just find a third base or actually we have Senzel so maybe maybe a, a second baseman or a shortstop I think those are the big needs and then at the pitching may maybe a fifth fifth starter and then like a setup man or closer so maybe one bullpen arm one starter and then one piece in the lineup and I think we're actually pretty set overall moving into the offseason the Nationals defeated the Astros and let's let's just head into the offseason David Wright has officially retired okay alrighty for arbitration everybody was uh, um, offered arbitration into contracts now I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys in a sec already tendered contracts John Gray 22.5 over five years Tui Valala five years 11.5 
um seth lugo probably going to be traded next year oh no he'll probably stay as long as he continues to develop 10 million for five years nimmo five years 29 million sawald was the one i'm looking to move um he got eight and a half over five um robert got three for two sosa got a hundred thousand for a year and then two million for two years for smith everybody else um oh med rosario got three years for two million as well so that's where we're looking at Alrighty, so one addition in free agency is Kelvin Herrera. Um, signed him. This is the contract over five years. Had a pretty decent year um, in terms of like strikeouts and walks. ERA wasn't there, but he, he should be a pretty solid setup man for us. So I think we'll be in a good spot there. There's our relief pitcher. Already brought in Nathan Uvalde. Um, 78 overall. Has has some had a decent year last year. 16 and nine. Um, his stats look okay and like i said he'll probably be that fourth or fifth starter for us so it's not too bad um, we also brought in burt hackett as that backup catcher for us so free agency wise not not too bad wasn't expecting to go after like anything crazy so let's see how the rest of the postseason or the offseason plays out Alrighty, this is a really big trade and it's mostly because of the way conforto performed last year and he decreased in ratings so we're going to be trading conforto um dominic smith and that pitcher that i don't need anymore in michael yanoa for cody bellinger who's a 92 overall a potential first baseman we get that new first baseman that really is going to help us out that means we knew we need a new outfielder though so let me see if i can kind of work some magic and find a new one Alrighty, so the trade we're going to be making is for jorge soler of the royals um we're getting rid of andres jimenez Paul Sewald, like I said, I was going to, and then the center field prospect of Desmond Lindsay. So that's going to be our new outfielder that we needed with that move. This is how we're going to line up. Alrighty, so this is how we're going to line up for the year. Senzel, Nimmo, Soler, Cespedes, Bellinger, Flores, Darno, Ahmed Rosario, and the pitcher spot in the bull in the bench. We got McNeil, Lagares, and hack it so this is the rotation and bullpen Syndergaard, Degrom, Gray, Ivaldi, Mats, Lugo, Swarzik, Tuivalala. I'm gonna put Rogers up here instead of Lugo and then Hicks, um, Robert, Herrera and Strickland I think we're gonna have a good year and um, let's just get into it so at the deadline or yeah the trade deadline day you can see we're three games out of first with the uh, behind the Phillies and in the wild card we're four games behind disabled list currently we have a, a starting pitcher on the you know the disabled list let's see how the CPU did with the draft we have Alfonso da Silva decent stats um, I'll show you his stats there pretty good already um, the next one that's decent is Fernando Pacheco who's a pitcher you can see his stats here he's 50 overall and then you got Tom Ha who's got some pretty decent stats there. Those, those are the ones we're going to be bringing in. Let's look at how everyone's, you know, pitching so far. Um, okay. I mean, not amazing, but not great. Um, maybe move Rogers there because he's got some decent... No, he doesn't have good stamina. We'll let... Yeah, we'll do that. We'll just leave it how it is. We'll let Swarzik go up there. We'll switch it around. So Robert's actually having a pretty good year. Um, Swarzik's doing pretty solid. Tui Valala, like I said, is just a monster. Rogers is having a rough season. Um, Hicks is having a rough season as well. And then we got Strickland and Herrera. Um, not too sure why they moved him around. Let's see if Strickland was just like blowing saves or something. Yeah, he was blown safe. So maybe we need a new setup, man. Um, as you can see, this is the squad. Ahmed Rosario is not doing too great in the leadoff spot. So maybe put Nimmo there. Um, see if that switch up helps us. Ahmed Rosario, Nimmo's hitting about 300. Um, and he's got some stats going up like crazy, like power versus lefties. Um, and he's got a 428 on base percentage. Ahmed Rosario is just not really doing well. Cody Bellinger, he's an 87 overall, but... He's having an okay year. He's already matched his home runs from last year. Cespedes has gone down to a 90, but he's having an okay year, so I'm cool with that. Jorge Soler is developing. He's hitting about 300. He's already matched his home run and ribbies from last year, even though he's played more games. So um, he's having a good year. Wilmer Flores is still doing pretty solid. 
Travis Darno is doing pretty well. Um, hitting wise, not so much, but like he's 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 doing what he's supposed to do. Juan Lagares here is having an okay year, and then we got Senzel, um, who's actually doing pretty good, and he's a 77 overall, so that's that's pretty good. McNeil on the bench is hitting 233, and Hackett's hitting 235. Let's see if any of these prospects that we have in the minors are ready to come up. Reigns is a 76, so he, maybe he maybe he's the setup man that we use for the rest of the year. Um, oh, I forgot about Sosa. Sosa's looking pretty solid. And then who else? We got Victor Victor Mesa is 71, and then Diaz is 72. So Diaz is probably gonna be ready next year. Mesa will probably be ready next year, and then so Sosa might be ready now. Who who would we? McNeil, but McNeil's doing pretty solid. Maybe Ahmed Rosario needs some time in the minors. We'll just bring him up and let him work on the bench and see how it goes. So let's just, I don't, I don't think we need to make a trade right now. I think we're good. I, I think we're just going to let the season ride. I feel like the trades we made at the beginning of the year are good enough. Let's see how the end of the season goes. Um, the second half of the season, see if we can push for that wild card spot. So second season, we finished 86 and 76, so a lot better than the previous year. Let's see how far we missed the stand. Five games out of the East and two games out of the wild card. For um, league leaders, we had walks and then awards. We had a gold, gold glove for Cespedes. Let's see how everyone finished on the year. John Gray. Rough wins and loss, rough ERA as well. Steven Matz is up to an 82, which is good to see. Eovaldi, actually a really good year. Um, walk strikeout numbers are good. ERA is pretty solid. Yeah, that's pretty good. Steven Matz, same thing. Walks and strikeouts are pretty good. And then um, John Gray, walks and strikeouts are pretty good. He didn't pitch that much, so I can't really evaluate him. Syndergaard is a 90. You can see his walks and strikeouts numbers were pretty good. It's the same with his ERA and same with DeGrom. Good walks and strikeout numbers. In the bullpen, looking at everything, Tui Valala is just a monster. Um, Taylor Rogers is up to a 79. Jordan Hicks is up to a 77. Strickland is still hanging on that 84. And then Kelvin Herrera went down, so it looks like his second half of the year was pretty rough. Lineup-wise, Nimmo's an 84. Like, holy cow, look at how good he's developing. 23 homers, a 421 on base percentage. Ahmed Rosario's a 78 now. Um, Hitting-wise, he's just, he's not doing amazing, but like, he's still developing. Cody Bellinger, he's doing well. He's up to a 90 for like, act like actually a 90 now. Cespedes is a 90, but he's, he's going down. Soler, um, potential's gone down even though he, he had a pretty good year. Flores is still going up in overall. Darno is starting to decrease. Lagares is starting to go down. And then Senzel is a 78. You can see he hit about 250 on the year, so not horrible. McNeil is a 72. He had a little bit of a rough year. He only finished at a 220. 235 for Burt Hackett, who's gone down in rating. And then Mundo Sosa hit 250. Um, for his plate appearances on the season. So overall, not too bad, but I definitely think we could have done a little bit better. I definitely think we should have at least got the wild card spot. The Red Sox defeated the Phillies. So let's let's actually uh, let's actually do something here in season three. I feel like uh, we've we really should have hit the playoffs there. Mario Garloba, the one we drafted, is retired. Okay, cool. Arbitration wise. Um, the ones that aren't getting it are these ones right here. I'm not going to offer them arbitration contracts are going to be all pretty cheap. So, um, I'll just show you the ones that are important. Sosa, Earl Jansen's going down, so I won't bring him back. And I think that's it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Alrighty. So we signed Wellington Castillo, 32 year old catcher. Hopefully does well i'm also looking to trade cespedes because he is starting to decrease because he is 34 which would mean we need a new outfielder so i'm gonna see if i can make anything happen if not um it'll probably be the beginning of the season once you see everything go through 
Alrighty, the trade we're going to be making to start Season 3 is Ioannis Cespedes is leaving as well as Fernando Nivar, a player we drafted, I think, in the first season for Christian Yelich. I think this is going to help us out in the infield. Plus, Cespedes is decreasing in value so and rating. So, I think that's a trade we definitely need to make for this season. With that said, I think that's all we need to do. Because, like, look at the squad. We're looking pretty solid here. Um... I, I just think we're, we're a lot better off with Yelich in the side than Cespedes. Because Cespedes is going to continue to decrease. And then we have Sosa. We have Rosario on the bench who are good little pieces. We could probably use a bench outfielder. Which means I think it's time for D Diaz. I'm going to bring up Diaz. Diaz's time to shine. I think that's the squad for the year. I I'm feeling good about it. Um, I found this prospect in the free agents. Jesus Lorenz. You can see I signed him to a contract. Really, like Guys, check free agency every single year. There's always really good players. So, this is how we're lining up for the year. Syndergaard, DeGrom, Gray, Mats, and Eovaldi. Robert, Lugo, Rogers, Hicks, Tuivalala, Reigns, the guy we drafted in the first season, um, Herrera, and Strickland. And then you saw the lineup already. Season three, I think that's all we needed to do. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, yeah, I'm feeling really good about it, actually. I'm going to let Sosa take over that shortstop spot. I think that's how it is. That's how we're going to line up for season three. Let's get into it. And let's let's win a World Series this time. All right. All right. All right. Look at us at the deadline day. Like 69 and 39. We're 16 and a half games above second place. Like we are absolutely killing it. Let's see how the CPU did with the draft. Pretty bad as expected. But let's see how the team's doing. Syndergaard's doing pretty solid 2.67 ERA that's not bad like that's not bad at all he does have a decent amount of walks but you know nine and four is not a bad season 2.6 ERA that's a that's a good year so far DeGrom is 12 and 5 he's sitting at a 3 ERA 156 strikeouts 45 walks John Gray's up to an 88 he's having a like wins and losses not the best but like a 4 ERA is like okay Walks and strikeouts. He already has more strikeouts than he did last year. Um, he does also have more innings pitched because he was hurt for most of last year. Steven Matz, again, 6-5 and five record, but still decent ERA and stats. Evaldi's back up, you know, having a pretty decent season so far. 2-5-3 ERA. That's really nice to see. Let's see how the bullpen's doing. These two aren't that bad. Seth Lugo's up to an 84 with a 3-2-7 ERA. So that's, that's pretty solid to see. Robert, Robert's okay. If he could finish with something like this, I'll be happy. But his walks and strikeouts, a little, little concerning. Taylor Rogers, not too bad. He's up to an 81 overall. He's got 40 innings pitched. He's not a strikeout guy. I'll, I'll let you <laughs> I can tell you that. He's not a strikeout guy, but his ERA isn't too bad. Jordan Hicks is up to an 80, even though he's been hurt for most of the year. So that's probably why he only has six innings pitched. Uh, he broke his hand, so he was out for like two months. Sam Tuivalala is continuing to be just an absolute monster. Like 46 innings, uh, 46 strikeouts. Like he's he's just so good. You guys need to pick him up. Whatever you do. Fred Reigns in his first professional season is actually doing pretty solid. Like I can't complain about these, these numbers at all. Kelvin Herrera, he's doing decent. Um, 1.69 ERA. Hunter Strickland though. 32 saves already in the year, so it's been a lot of close games, but five blown saves. You know what? Call me crazy, but I think Hunter Strickland's time as our closer is done, which means maybe it's time to add a new pitcher or maybe a new bat, depending on how everyone is performing. Diaz in his first professional year is up to a 74. He's hitting 238 with a 312 average, four homers, 18 RBIs. Not bad just under 200 at bats Nimmo is up to an 87 wow 18 homers 65 ribbies 271 372 on base percentage Bellinger is a monster 29 homers 80 ribbies 
11 stolen bases, almost 300 average, a 425 on base percentage, 604 slugging. Yelich, he's gone down a little bit, but you know what? He's, it's, it's basically about the same production as Cespedes, a little bit better actually, because Cespedes was hitting in the low 200, so um, maybe, maybe he can uh, turn it around in the second half of the season. Soler has gone up, which I mean, he's gone up and down. He's having a pretty similar year to last year, which is what I was looking for. Wellington Castillo is continuing to develop even at the age of 32. So that's good to see. He's having a pretty solid year as well. As well. Nick Senzel, 80 overall, 16 homers. He matched his number already from last year. About the same ribbies. He's hitting about the same though. Um, but yeah, he's having a good year. Wilmer Flores, he's going up still, even though he had C potential. He's having a pretty solid year, home, almost 300. And Edmundo Sosa, his potential's gone down, but he's still developing. Um, and he's at an 82. McNeil's a 75. Tomas Nido is a 71. You can see he's going up. And he's actually hitting pretty well, which is good to see. And then Ahmed Rosario is a 77. So, so far, so good. As you can see, at the end of the year, we finished the season 97 and 65. And we won the division. We're taking on the Cubs. So it is definitely going to be a um, a pretty good matchup. The unfortunate thing is we lost Wellington Castillo to a broken hand, which sucks because we're, we're losing our best catcher. He did have a pretty solid season though. Um, not as good as the previous year, but still a pretty good year. Um, also at the end of the year, we lost um, Ho Jorge Soler for a couple months. He just came back. But as you can see, Cody Bellinger had the most runs scored as well as the most walks. For awards, let's see what we got here. A gold glove. Eh. Um, overall, 11 and 8 for Noah Syndergaard. Pretty, pretty good year. You know, not as many strikeouts. Um, but he had more wins than last year. His ERA was better. His whip, about the same. So overall, oh, that was, that's a good thing to see. He His home runs went from 30 to 90 and his earned runs dropped his runs dropped his hits dropped so overall and his war went up so a pretty good year that was a lot better than previous years the 16 and 6 similar innings pitched a couple more walk about 20 more walks about the same strikeouts same era but looking at his stats you can see his hits went down his runs were about the same same with earned runs home runs went down and his war went up so a good year for him John Gray 12 and 9 more innings than last year but he was hurt last year more strikeouts good year definitely better with the ERA and then you can see even though he pitched more um, this year than last year he had less homers allowed so that's that's another great stat to see Steven Matz 84 overall 353 three ERA wonderful um, home runs went down from last year same with earned runs and runs his war pretty much about the same and Eovaldi, I mean, 200 innings for a fifth starter is pretty solid. Again, earned runs, runs went down. Home runs about the same, a little bit higher actually, but his war did go up. Um, Robert, just not, not doing too well here. We didn't trade anybody at the deadline. I looked for something. I just couldn't find anything. Hunter Strickland was, I was trying to do a combo package of uh, Robert and Strickland and nothing really caught my eye so I wasn't able really to find anything. Um, Fred Rains in his first year, like the second half I put him at closer, you can see um, not a bad year, four blown saves, but I can't really complain about that. Kelvin Herrera, a really good year, a lot better than the year before, um, but like less walks, more strikeouts. Um, less hits, less earned runs. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Hunter Strickland. I moved him to the bullpen. I mean, pretty similar numbers than from last year. He did allow a couple more earned runs. Sam Tuivalala. His ERA has progressively gone up, but his, he's just a monster. Like he's just so good. Jordan Hicks is up to an 81. He pitched 20 innings, had a 2.33 ERA. Like these. That's good to see Taylor Rogers. He's up to an 81. He had a 2.75 ERA. Seth Lugo, 85. Wonderful season. Let's see. Earned runs went down, and he pitched about uh, about 20 innings less, but still. And then you can see Robert's stats here. A, a pretty good year. It, heading into the lineup, 
Christian Yelich finished the season at the lean up in the lead off spot. He's down to an 88, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, and Mundo Sosa potential still going down, but he's still going up in rating. He had a decent year um, for his first professional, like first season as a starter. Cody Bellinger just continues to get better and better. Has very similar numbers than last year, except for his average went up 30 points, which is amazing to see. Brandon Nimmo's an 86, one more homer, 14 more ribbies, and his average went down, which is a little disappointing, but still a pretty solid season. Nick Senzel looks like an absolute monster. Similar stats from last year, but more homers, more ribbies, better average, better on base percentage. Let's see what his strikeouts were. A little bit, a little bit more. Wilmer Flores is an 82. He's gone up. He had a pretty good year. Almost 300, 341 um, on base percentage. Yusniel Yus 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 Diaz hit a 273. I mean, for first year, that's pretty solid for a 75 overall. Jorge Soler is at 81. Pretty similar stats from last year, even though he got hurt. Like he had 100 less at bats and he had pretty similar output. More ribbies actually, a little bit less homers, but like pretty similar stats. And then Tomas Nido took over at catcher and um, had a decent year, pretty decent year. Jesus Lorenz is up to a 79. He had 76 at bats, hit about 197, which isn't great to see. And Ahmed Rosario is up to an 80. He had a little bit better of an average and stuff like that. So, so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the squad. Um, over, oh, we got a 71 pitcher. That's good. That's good. Victor Victor Mace is up to a 74. And then Philip Evans is still, I don't know where he came up from, but he's, he's developing quite nicely. So I'm feeling good about this series with the Cubs. Um, if you guys don't know, Cubs are my favorite team. So it's going to be unfortunate that we're going to have to beat them. But heading into the first game, we're going Syndigo. You know what? It doesn't feel right without putting DeGrom in that first spot. So DeGrom, Quintana, let's hop into it. Alrighty, so this is actually the, I just like thought about this. This is the first time we've been in the playoffs. We get the first win. We get the second win. All right, so we're 2-1, we're 2-2, two, 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 and we advance to take on the Brewers. Okay, so. Hicks lost us that one. Matt's lost there. And then Valdi won that one. So heading into the Brewers, it should be a good matchup. Alrighty, just to show you the lineup for the Brewers, they have Corbin, Sonny Gray, Burns, I think that is, or Barnes. I think it's Burns or Barnes. And then I forgot, I can't see who their last starting pitcher is, along with a couple other ones. In the lineup, they have Kane, Santana, Gregory Polanco, Jonathan Scope, um, Travis Shaw, Jesus Aguilar, Manny Pena, and Lucas Urseg. So that's their squad. I feel like we should win this. I really do. So let's let's do this. DeGrom, Corbin, nine to six victory. Get the second win, six to nothing. We take our first loss, and we're one game away from advancing. Oh my gosh! Come on! No way! Game seven. Four to three victory. Okay. And we're taking on the Red Sox in, yeah, the, I was going to say the Red Sox or the Mariners, but then when I advanced, it showed the Red Sox. So the Red Sox versus the Mets in the World Series. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Ready for the Red Sox. They have Carlos Rodon, Chris Sale, David Price. Um,. I have no idea who that pitcher is. Let me go see. Eduardo Rodriguez. That's who it is. Eduardo Rodriguez. And um, I don't know who that last one is. Ricky something. Ricky something for their last pitcher. Um, Eduardo Nunez. Mookie Betts. Andrew Benatendi. JD Martinez. Um, Rafael Devers. Didi Gregorius. Eric Thames. And Blake Swihart. And then Jackie Bradley. So, again, I think we're pretty evenly matched up here. Um... They do have a couple more 90, 90s than us, but that's okay. I feel like we're still pretty evenly matched up, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. So let's let's see how we fare against the Red Sox. Game one, 15 to seven victory. Game two, eight to six victory, and we're feeling pretty good. 2-0 start, 
and then we get knocked back down to earth and we're back two to two we take the three to two victory so here it is this could be the game that wins us the world series let's uh let's get ready for this one alrighty so going into game six we're gonna have John Gray take the mound versus Chris Sale the squad's looking pretty good um I don't think we need to make any changes we only have two bench bats because we do have a DH tonight today um so let's see how it goes Yelich starts off with the pop-up Sosa walks that's good to see Bellinger walks okay a triple brings home two runs then we get a single and it's looking solid Ahmed Rosario three run bomb and we're up six to nothing to start the game what a way to start we bat around the first inning almost and now we Sosa makes it eight to nothing and Chris Sale's out of the game. That is a phenomenal start for us. Eight to nothing here in game six. And um, let's get out of this. Okay, they do get one back, but it's eight to one now. They're on their third pitcher of the game. John Gray, come on. John Gray, that's probably... Okay, okay, I was gonna say it's probably one of his last innings. Bellinger gets one back for us gets two back for us Wilmer Flores and uh, we're up 10 to 3 let's see if John Gray can at least get us through five and he does Ahmed Rosario who went was it deep in the yeah he went deep in the first inning the three run bomb strikes out and then uh, we go one two three but we're gonna we're gonna do a pitching change here we're gonna have Robert come in and uh, hopefully not let this get out of hand 10 to 4 Sosa, okay, Sosa's having a little bit of a game for himself, and then we we weren't able to take mm, weren't able to take advantage of that. We're gonna bring in Tui Valala and uh, gets us out of the inning. That's what I like to see. Senzel grounds out, Soler flies out, and Rosario hits his second homer of the game, 11 to five here in the eighth, and we're gonna let Tui Valala just close it out. It's gonna be game. We're entering the game because it is the last. Um, what's it called? The last out. We're going to let Fred Reigns take over for the last out of the game. Oh, wait, no, it's the eighth. What am I talking about? We're going to let Fred Reigns come in anyways. <laughs> I thought it was the ninth inning already. Oh, man. I'm getting ahead of myself. Senzel, three run bomb, 14 to five. And now. We have Fred Reigns coming in, and he's going to close it out. Let's hop into it and finish off this game. All righty, DD's walking up 0 for 4 on the day. Fred Reigns got a two-seam curve and a splitter. We're going to start him off with the curve and see if we can start it off right. Unfortunately, it was a ball, but wow, 14 to 5 here. That is nuts. One to one count. We had an... We just absolutely tore Chris Sale apart Fred Reigns has got a little bit of control issues come on just throw it in the strike zone we, we got a huge lead you don't need to pitch around them two to two we're gonna we're gonna drop this splitter in here see if we strike him out to win the World Series and we do the New York Mets take it home in game six and to be honest with the way we play today we deserved it this was insane we absolutely crushed it this team's actually really good and i really liked play, like creating it like developing the players and just turning them into a pretty solid team like this team is really nimmo is a phenomenal center fielder um i think one thing i would change is um i would try to find a different outfielder for jorge soler and then um, probably try to find a different catcher instead of Wellington Castillo, just because he is kind of, he is aging and he's not really, you know, kind of fits the mold of this young squad that we do have here. Because we have, we have, I guess we could just let Tomas Nido take over because he's mid 70s already. So he could be the new catcher. Then you have at first base, Cody Bellinger, who's pretty young. Second base was Nick Senzel, who's young. Shortstop Ahmed Rosario or Jesus Flores or whatever his name is that just came up. Um, 
third base was split between a couple players Wilmer Flores was one Edmundo Sosa is another one you know like this is a really young team and I really like to see what like what we could do with this team in the future Ahmed Rosario two homers four ribbies Wilmer Flores a homer with two ribbies and three runs and Mundo Sosa had a homer with two ribbies and two runs and then Senzel a homer with three ribbies that so many home runs this game John Gray three earned runs over five innings Chris Sale made it only one inning and I feel like we re yeah we just really deserve to win that World Series this team was absolutely amazing in the postseason 14 runs on 14 hits that's crazy then the Mets won the World Series so let's see who the MVP for the playoffs was that was Cody Bellinger and the World Series MVP was actually Jorge Soler a player that I said I would probably get rid of Christian Yelich he is 28 he's starting to decrease in ratings so he might be another player I'd look to replace um but like and Mundo Sosa he's an 83 that's pretty good he's 24 I'd keep him around that's a good young player second baseman Cody Bellinger 24 first baseman set Brandon Nimmo center field he's 27 he's still pretty young he's 88 overall center fielder center fielder set third base Senzel um, so we're set there Wilmer Flores he's 28 and he's still playing well so I'd probably keep him around for another season um, until we really need another second baseman or you know we kind of had a, a rotating squad here with Ahmed Rosario Lorenz Senzel and Flores and Sosa all kind of playing second short and third um, we have Diaz who's a 75 he'll probably hit 80 next season so he could probably take over for Jorge Soler Tommy Tomas Nido he's a good catcher right now he's developing quite nicely we have this guy who we found in free agency Jesus Lorenz a potential he's almost an 80 so he looks to be a player who could definitely help us out um, if Sosa doesn't develop any further and then we have Ahmed Rosario who just absolutely killed it in game number six of the World Series so I think this team is another one of those teams I really liked um, even the pitching rotation DeGrom he is 31 but he's still got a, a really good arm and he's pitching well Syndergaard he's 27 he's doing pretty solid 28 for John Gray he's got a good couple years in him same with Steven Matz the only one that could be possibly moved on is Nathan Nivaldi and um, even he had a pretty decent year um, the bullpen is a place where we probably could improve I think Fred Reigns is gonna be an amazing closer 83 overall at the age of 21 that looks to be phenomenal like his stats look amazing we have Kelvin Herrera for another couple seasons um, as long as he pitches well like he did this season he's a great setup man Hunter Strickland would probably be a player I'd look to replace Sam Tui Valala not going anywhere at the age of 27 Jordan Hicks not going anywhere he's 23 and developing nicely Taylor Rogers decent little lefty in the bullpen Seth Lugo's per turning out to be a pretty solid righty and then um, Robert would be a player I'd maybe look to move on just because he's kind of hit or miss so Strickland and Robert are probably the two pitchers I'd look to move on from and then Yelich and Soler would probably be the two players in the lineup I'd look to move on from just because I don't really see them lasting too much longer that they'd actually be good and they'd probably start decreasing pretty soon we also have Victor Victor Mesa who's a 74 so he even could possibly come up as like that rotational outfielder and then let Diaz take over and write for next season I think this team is really good for the future I think this was a great rebuild for us three seasons two seasons without the playoffs and then the next year we go and win the world series i think that's amazing i really liked it i hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild if you did make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you are new and enjoyed the content and let me know in the comment section below what other teams you'd like for me to rebuild i definitely will have another one out this weekend um i just sat here for about three hours absolutely no head problems so i'm pr i'm feeling good i'm feeling refreshed i'm ready to make some videos for you guys so i'll catch you all in the next video peace